fun to dissolved oxygen, right? What is dissolved oxygen? Dissolved oxygen is the concentration of atmospheric oxygen that's dissolved in water. Very simple. It can be seen, for example, when you pour a glass of tap water. The reason that the you can see the air bubbles is a little bit different, but it's a similar concept, right? So you have, let's say you pour a glass of water and that water is cloudy. That cloudiness are actually very tiny air bubbles that join together uh, because the water itself was moving really fast and it was probably so, a bit warm in those pipes. When you leave that glass, you set it on your countertop or on your table, you or even hold it in your hand, you just give it maybe 10, 20 seconds and you'll notice the cloudiness disappears. Why is that? That is because gas, when it's in that water, it's escaping. It's very buoyant and what's happening is the water wants to be the same temperature as its environment. And because if you're talking about fresh water, for example, it's very easy for it to be affected by temperature changes. In order for it to match, begin to match the temperature of its environment, those gases will continue to get released. And keep that in mind when we do talk about the relationship between dissolved oxygen and temperature uh, for our next class. Dissolved oxygen, it ranges between uh, 0 ppm to 14 ppm. So same concept, but different, uh, slightly different measurement. So ppm is parts per million, same exact concept, glass of water, let's say it's fresh, for example, uh, for every million molecules that's in that glass, 14 of them at the highest point are oxygen bubbles. Now, in general, dissolved oxygen comes from two sources, right? So one source is photosynthesis, which is what you're seeing here, very simple just like how we exhale uh, carbon dioxide, we have plants that exhale, quote unquote, or release oxygen. And if those plants are in or near very, very close to water, then that oxygen will get released into a water body. But take a look at here, diffusion from the atmosphere. That's really where you get most of that oxygen that ends up dissolving into that water. And it's the same exact reason, but in reverse as to why when you have a glass of water and it starts off cloudy and the cloudiness disappears, a lot of that has to do with the fact that in general, nature likes to form a, an equilibrium, right? So another reason that the air that's in water dissolves or, uh, evaporates into the atmosphere is because it wants to match the number of molecules per a number of gas molecules or oxygen molecules in that glass and have it be the same as it is in the atmosphere. There's still gases exchanging even if you um, even if all of the air bubbles are gone there's still gases being exchanged right? And so the same thing is happening in a normal water body. Another concept that we also talked about was wind cycling, right? So if you have a water body that's in an environment where there's a lot of wind, that allows for that oxygen to circulate throughout the, um, throughout this water body, which is what you want right? Because that way all organisms have access to the oxygen that they need to survive. If there was no wind, what would happen is something called stratification. And we did touch on this before. Stratification occurs when the water column, which is what you see me drawing here. So let's say you have a slice 
or a three-dimensional slice or column of water, what starts to happen is, is, is there, if there's no uh, wind and there's no mixing within the water itself, it starts to stratify or form layers. So you might have a layer here, you might have a layer here, you might have another layer here, and then you might have a layer here, for example, right? So what are these layers? These layers are different concentrations of dissolved oxygen. So take, for example, because this very this surface here, let's say it's the summertime, and you'll find out later on why I mentioned the summertime. Uh, we will find that in the next class. But let's say it's summertime, right? If you measure the dissolved oxygen of a water body, let's say it's a freshwater system, this dissolved oxygen could be three parts per trillion, right? Now, a couple reasons. Main one, same exact reason that those bubbles left your glass of water, your water's warming up. Same thing here, the water is warmer at the top. So there's less air in that water. As you get further down, get a little brighter, this oxygen level or concentration might be four parts per trillion, parts per million, sorry about that. And then as you get deeper, this might be six. Keep in mind again, temperature is going down. And then maybe down here, part the oxygen, let's be generous and let's say it's at 10. So as you see, these, each one are layers, and I'll put a measurement here, let's say it's seven. So each one of these layers indicates that the dissolved oxygen has stratified or formed layers, and it's not limited to dissolved oxygen. This is the same thing that happens with pH, with salinity. Uh, you can literally have different environments in this one water body. And that especially happens in the ocean. As a reminder, I mentioned that there is this fish, and I wish I remember the name of it, but there's this fish that lives deep, deep, deep in the ocean, so deep that the amount of pressure would be just a little bit, it's right on the border of what the human body can take in terms of that water crushing onto our bodies. And it also does not receive any light. So it, it's adapted through evolution to have uh, eyes that are able to see in other wavelengths in order to go after its prey. And so scientists, they study these because they're basically really fascinating creatures. But that's a form of stratification, right? So in that environment, it's much colder, it's saltier, and uh, most likely the amount of oxygen in that environment probably is on the higher end. There's a lot more there are more parameters to think about with that, but most likely it's higher. And finally, the relationship between dissolved oxygen and aquatic organisms. Now, most organisms prefer uh, dissolved oxygen or DO to be above four ppm. So this includes striped bass, American shad, um, some others are uh, perch, uh, salmon, things like that. Once you start getting below three parts per million, that's when you start getting into a situation like aquatic die-offs, right? And then it starts to create that domino effect we talked about. If you have aquatic die-offs, as those organisms begin to decay, then it increases the amount of hydrogen atoms, which means that you're making that water more acidic, which increases the amount of die-offs because aquatic organisms do not like changes in pH. Another relationship there as well between water quality parameters. Saltwater fish typically 
saltwater fish typically have a higher tolerance for changes in oxygen. And that has to do with the relationship between oxygen and, sorry, between temperature, um, temperature, dissolved oxygen and salt. Think of it this way. So what starts to happen is that, let's say for example, you want to boil pasta or even if you want to boil rice, right? And what you may have seen your family do or what you may have done yourself is you may have added some salt to that water, but you may not have thought about why. The reason is because it raises that water's boiling point. When you add salt, you're changing a property of that water. So it's not going to boil at 100 degrees Celsius, it's going to boil at a higher temperature. Why is that important? When water is boiling, that means heat is escaping, which means that your food is going to cook a certain time. If you add salt to that water, which increases the uh, boiling point's temperature, you're keeping more heat in that water, which makes your food cook faster. Now let's relate this to fish, right? So if you have a saltwater fish, even if the temperature or the amount of dissolved oxygen changes, that change will not be reflected in its body, right? It takes longer for it to change because it just is able to retain the oxygen it needs to be able to survive. And it's the same exact concept because as water is boiling, part of the reason it's boiling is as oxygen is escaping. But if you have salt, there's more time for that oxygen to stay. So therefore, even when there are changes, it's not reflected in this body. Also another note that with freshwater fish, they do not have a high tolerance for changes in dissolved oxygen. So they are much more sensitive systems. Um, there also aren't as much variety of freshwater fish, which is pretty interesting, but it's really because of the fact that whatever has been selected through natural selection via evolution, um, it has to be able to survive in that environment and potentially survive any drastic changes if it were to occur.